taking the bus out for the winter. We've never done a winter trip with the bus. So this is part of the idea. We wanted to see if the bus can handle the winter, handle some snow. We've actually got some skiing planned, hunting, and fishing all this weekend. Steve and Brian are coming out. We're getting the whole crew together this week. Rolling up in the airport right now. Uh, it's a little different. I live here now. We're getting the car packed. Finally moving out of the parents' house. <laughs> We're getting this all ready to go to Salt Lake. We've got the car packed here. Everything is, is in the back. And tomorrow, my mom and I are driving out west. All right guys, we have officially made it to Utah. We are here. The mountains are looking beautiful. Just cruising on in here to Salt Lake. And uh, let the adventures begin. Oh my god, this is a fat bit. Oh! Having settled into my new home with my new roommate, it was time to get the crew back together. Utah offers some amazing winter opportunities, and we wanted to take full advantage of it on this trip. But before we get into the video, we would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers, and it would mean the world if you could help us get there. All right, let's get into it. He's asleep. He didn't even, he's asleep over there in the sun. He didn't even know we showed up. Hey, buddy. Do you bring a bus with you, too? What's that? You bring the bus with you? Yeah, did you drive the bus I, Honestly, like, I saw that, like, turn the corner up there. I was like, oh, did they bring the bus to pick me up? And I realized it was just a little ferry bus. I was disappointed when you pulled it's up in a truck. Bus. Yeah. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too, bro. How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Uh, All right, let's do this. Steve, it's, you happy to be here? I'm ecstatic to be here. I got to sign into work a little bit this afternoon, make sure that things get taken care of. I forgot to put my out of office messages on Outlook, so I got to update that. And I'm home free for the weekend, and I'm looking forward to it. Wow. I know. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> so I already get enough comments about me talking too fast, so you can't understand me. So, you know, <laughs> good help. <laughs> but I love you guys. <laughs> well, we got the bus in storage at this little spot so uh we're we'll all up here to grab the bus uh for the weekend there she is oh, oh. <laughs> look at all these other people that are not unique or special <laughs> yeah it smells a little funky in here i don't know what it is so i'm having f shack in here while we're gone thanks for the f shack <laughs> day of the boys i don't know Oh, whatever. She just like we left her. <laughs> All right, guys. Swapped out the rods today. Got the skis in the bus. Taking the bus to the mountain. This is gonna be really, really sick. One of the things I was most excited about with moving out here was the skiing opportunity. And uh, yeah, this should, be, uh, this should be really fun today. just outside of Salt Lake City. It's a great ski resort, uh, real kind of mom and pop local feel and not one of these big corporation owned resorts. So really cool spot, you gotta come check it out. But huge shout out to them for letting us ski today. Uh, we're gonna go up here. I can ski a little bit, Scotty can ski a little bit. Uh, we're not great. 
I'll be on the bunny slopes, <laughs> having fun. Steve has fun. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm definitely no ski instructor, but I've uh, been snowboarding for a long time. And uh, I'm actually a little better snowboarder than I am a skier. So giving Steve some hints today, hints and tips, and hopefully he can pick it up. He, he's actually improved a hell of a lot just since like the first half of this run. So oh. I, think he's, uh, I think he's getting it back. So we're just warming up on a couple greens here. Try to get Steve dialed, get him uh, back in the groove. Hey, sir. While he's down. <laughs> I'm tired. My leg hurts. Had fun, but I'm dying right now. <laughs> <laughs> About all I got. <laughs> You're one run in. I'm one run in. I'm a run run chomp, apparently. <laughs> you. All right, we broke away from Steve for a little bit. We're gonna leave him on the bunny slopes down there and he might be finding his way to a beer here soon. Um, but we're gonna go find, hopefully, some cooler terrain. There he is. Woo. This is what hanging out with Scotty is a lot like, is just doing this. Constantly waiting on me. A lot of around, putting the backpack. I'm worse than a snowboarder right now, dude. I'm wearing a backpack when you go skiing. I would not recommend it. Somebody's got to carry the camera gear, though. There we go. Someone's got to carry camera this film. Gear. All right. We can go left. We have some left down here. Left right there? Uh, so you want to pass that lift and go to that Great Western next? Yeah, I'll be down with that. Are we skiing? Okay. I see a light shine. Wanna let it in from the outside. Feel it on my skin. take a little peek down here into the parking lot you see a lot of black white silver gray maybe a red here and there but there's just one vehicle that really stands out down there in the parking lot and uh it's, it's yellow we back baby hey morning we made it back are you, are you done for the day or? I'm yeah, Steve, done. give us a little update. What, what we got going? What happened to you today? I almost hit a tree, slammed down hard uh, to stop myself, and my legs started cramping. Made the wrong decision and went down to blue, which I shouldn't barely be on a green. <laughs> and it was very windy. Well, not steep, but just windy through trees. And I just picked up too much speed towards the bottom and just ate it. <laughs> we, we brought the technology to be able to. Uh, 
make some chili cheese dogs because there's nothing like chili cheese dogs when you're taking a break from skiing. You've been working hard. Some of us have been working harder than others. Dying. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> Trying not to die. <laughs> Trying not to die. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we came down to the down to the base here. We're going to tailgate and make some make some dogs and get some get some more power in us to be able to go back out and reload. <laughs> New hot dog so just dropped in the update. Might be the concussion I just got, but Adam, you outdid yourself. What's the consensus? Mm. That's good. They're, they actually put a picture of Steven on the cam yeah. from earlier today. It's a weird looking That's snowboard. Smart. That's a weird, well, no, that, I think he's got two snowboards. Oh, okay, that makes sense. He's double cool. All right, boys, lunch break is over. It's time to get back after. Same one, to the left. on these sticks today. Been training for the X Games pretty hard. Uh, just trying to get down this green right here. It's been tough, but next season, um, the moguls, I think, are gonna be, is gonna be my, uh, you know, my X Games of choice. You know, some people have called me the Sean White of skiing, uh, mostly because I'm ugly, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've really kind of taken that to heart. I think... Uh, <laughs> I believe in you. I don't know. We just wrapped up an awesome day at Brighton. We uh, we're just getting back to the bus now. Steve finished his first day of skiing, snowboarding, for quite some time. Um, I'm alive. He's alive. We got better throughout the day. And the very, very, the very last run there, my leg just gave out on me. I was way too exhausted. And I just couldn't stay up. But overall, I think I got a lot better. Be looking forward to the next time I get out of here. Hopefully it's uh, before another three years passes. Boys and girls, look who just arrived. Late in last night. <coughs> wow, I lost my voice too, I'm here. A little delayed flight? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what happened. I got two hours of sleep, but I'm here. All right, so we're gonna do a pheasant hunt today. We're here at a pheasant club in Utah. Utah does not have a ton of wild pheasant anymore due to all sorts of different reasons, mostly just decrease of habitat. So we're here uh, at a pheasant club. It's a ton of fun. You get to shoot a bunch of birds. Grab a shell. Okay. Slide it in there and Push that up with the shell. Yep. Only point in a safe direction. Never somebody else. Of course. The safety is on. Safety's right here. Don't put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to shoot. Yeah. And then don't shoot the dog. Wow. There we have it. Thank you. I've shot some clays before in my uh, in my past, but there we are. Never shot a live animal, so. That live animal not win. <laughs> or me. Don't put that in my head. You've probably seen him run around the bus a few times. This is uh, this is Winston, the uh, the hunting dog. He's fluffy. He's soft. He'll be your friend. And uh, the only thing that he likes more than going fishing is going bird hunting. Winston, here, find him. This is my first official time hunting. Didn't really grow up around it, so I was never really exposed to it. I'm honestly really excited to see Winston just absolutely operate out here. And uh, I've never actually seen him hunt, so this will be fun.
Oh, yeah, be ready, Steve. He's around here. Going down. Oh, we got him? Oh. <laughs> he just hit the afterburners. Right there. <laughs> There's no way that we missed that bird that bad. Uh -huh. Well, that bird's gone. That was my that one was on me. I don't know. Steve, what's the issue, dude? What? What's the issue? Oh, there's no issues. What happened on that last one though? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> so most guns, so uh, okay, some guns have this thing that they just came out with called a safety. Never heard of it. And uh, if you're gonna shoot, you have to take that off. It this happens. is a terrible idea, terrible design. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Steven didn't remember that they had done that. It happens. You just want that those tying materials and that meat. That's all I'm thinking about. I just completely forgot about the safety. You're just thinking about me? Yeah. So I'm actually a lefty. And I don't think this is quite designed for lefties, but... You think a shell will hit me in the face? It'll come at you. Okay. Nice shot. I've been practicing with this gun. Cool. All right. Hey, come on. Steven shot a bird. Yep. Shot Proud bird. of him. Heel. Drop it. Good boy. Come on, find him. It's hit. Winston will get him. We shot a bird uh, a little bit ago from way over there. Hit. Uh, we hit it low, had a lot of uh, spunk left in it, and it ended up flying all the way to here. Uh, we kind of knew there was one in this range, but we didn't want to walk and kind of mess up some of the hunting in between here and where we'd shot the bird at. So fortunately found this bird right where it fell. I think I'm gonna join him. We got a couple birds that we're gonna cook up tonight. Should be pretty fun. And we might even use uh, some of the materials to tie some flies tonight for our fishing trip tomorrow. But yeah, it was fun. Cool to see something new. This is totally out of my element. And, you know, this isn't some wild exotic hunt, but it's still fun to see the process of it and see Winston go to work. That was, that was, that was really cool. We are in the kitchen. We're back from our pheasant hunt. We've got our pheasants cleaned. We're going to cook this pheasant dish for you. We've got some farro, and uh, I don't actually know what that is, but it actually tastes really good in this dish. Uh, it's vegetables. Again, not really familiar with vegetables, but we have those. As you know, before you cook anything, you got to have the right drink. So uh, we're going to make some red beers. Um, Steve, uh, will you turn around real quick? I don't really remember what the... Since the beer and the... Lot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, you're good. You're good. I got it. You know, sometimes you get out there, you get to drink red beers, you forget how to make them. Uh, happens to me, could happen to you. So we made it easy on you. We designed a shirt that reminds you how to make the red beer. We get asked a lot, what is a red beer? We've got a shirt that's got the instructions on the back of it. There you go, Steve. Sweet, appreciate it. All right, before I forget, uh, let's not forget to uh, free hobo Steve. We got some brand new merch coming out. Uh, go over to the Wildfly website and check that out. Uh, while we've been out here in Salt Lake, we've been planning a whole bunch of 
great trips coming up this year. We cannot wait to share that with y'all. And so every bit of swag that you you go over there and grab uh, helps us fund these trips and to share our adventures with you guys. Uh, so that like I said, you know, hashtag free hobo Steve. Go check out the swag and uh, can't wait to see uh, what the rest of this year holds for us. Delicious, Adam. Delicious. So once your butter's hot, just go ahead and drop your chicken or pheasant in, in this case. So again, we're doing all this while our farro is cooking. Again, that takes like 30 minutes. So since you're only 10 minutes or so on the pheasant, and then uh, we've got some vegetables that are gonna go, those don't take long at all. Make sure you already have your farro rolling so that they kind of come together at the same time. So now we're gonna cook the vegetables in the same pan that we just pulled our pheasant out of. Get your pan nice and coated with butter, then we're gonna to toss in our zucchini. I wish I'd never met you. I wish I could forget you. And all the things you've done to my home. I have an awful time up getting you off my So that's enough food for an appetizer for me. Oh, sweet Jesus. Damn, that was good. Wow. Mm, that smells good. Gee. Kill yeah. off, Adam. Is this non-GMO organic vegan food? Yeah, it's vegan for sure. Yeah. It's vegan with plus meat? Yeah, just vegan with meat. Alright, it's my first time ever eating pheasant. Here we go. Gas. Tastes like chicken. It's gas, so. Tastes like chicken. I'm not sure what Pharaoh is, but yeah, it's delicious too. There you go. All right, we're going to chomp this down, and then uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow in Idaho. All right, guys, it's morning time. We just loaded the bus. We made sure to get heaters, because this is going to be a, uh, a cold trip. But we're going to make a little probably two-day trip up to Idaho and we got a little forecast last night that it was going to be like negative six at night so we'll see how this bus does I think the coldest we were in last time was like 20 maybe and so this is going to be the true test uh, of this of this new bus Uh, brushing up on some light reading here. Figured I'd uh, get a head start before we uh, get out there on the water. It's been a bit, so you know, got a little rusty. We don't move very fast around here, so we're trying to make up time by rigging up on the go. I'm helping. After a three hour drive to Idaho, we were headed to meet up with our buddy Dave. Dave is a lifetime trout bum and guide in the Idaho area. You'll turn over a piece of rock? And the amount of caddis that'll come out of one rock, it'll just start to come alive. And next thing you know, you're looking at a live coral that came off the bottom of the river. It's kooky. He was kind enough to take some time off this week to show us around some of his local water. Made it. Let's go. We made it. I'm so car sick. push them. We'd go along the bank all the way to, you know, pretty much right there. So uh, we decided to take the adventure route today and we are dropping the boats in the ice and we're going to shove them on up, slide them up through the ice so we can get up here below the dam and try to get some fishing in off the boats. The spot that looks sketchy to me is that little ribbon right there and right where we got to cross that gap. As we go out, the boat's going to drop off that ice, but I think it's pretty thick. You know, we may have some breakage. Just whoever's pushing has got to be ready to flop in the boat. We can also hook this. I've got other straps too. We can hook them in the front. So somebody could actually be on the bank. But I think we're only looking at a couple pinches where right where it drops off the ice shelf and then right at this little gap here.
They're doing a great job supervising. Someone's got to do it. There you have it. Made it look easy. That worked because they there were only two of them to go ahead and hop immediately in. So one of us needs to be up front. I think we need to get close. One person needs to just hold on to the boat to get up front, and then the other two need to just push. Yep, we're good. Y'all ever seen something that graceful before? Around the corner where it kind of pushes off. Uh huh. If you can get that thing landed up in there, yeah, and let it float. So if it if it even moves, whale on it. All right. So we're nymphing super deep. These fish. This is a really really deep stretch of water. I mean, it's like thirty something feet deep here. Uh, so we're fishing ten to fifteen feet deep on a nymph rig. Um, so as much as Hobo Steve loves to nymph, we've made it even harder for him to do so. Um, so he's having a ton of fun with this. Go all the way up into that uh, white water coming out straight in front of you. Stay on it, fish that down. Oh, okay. For how long that rig is, it takes so long to get to the bottom uh -huh. that when it's on the bottom, you ought to fish it. Well, guys, I'm not even gonna lie, it's freaking cold out right now. Probably could put on another layer with the bus, but it is what it is. And it's hard when you're just nipping, looking at a bobber. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of action going on. Up. Giving him the business. You. Yeah. yeah. This is first fish ever on a fly rod. Here we go, baby. Nice. Yeah. You need a pretty good pie there, Dan. Biggest fish this year, first fish this year. Hell yeah, bro. Starting off 2022 and heading out. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Give me the business now. Shoo. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, he is beat up. There we go. Daddy, we found him, I think. We're having so much fun. I mean, hey, we could be waiting, so you know, it could be worse. Yeah, it could be tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fun. We're having fun. You should be here. <laughs> the only thing that I can say is better is that it's not snowing here, but it's snowing back home in Alabama right now. So <laughs> we, we, got, we got that going on for us. Before heading back to the bus, Dave had one more spot in mind he wanted to show us. And within minutes, we were hooked up. Come on, Scotty. Bring him on in. All right, turn him head up, head up, head up. Put his head up. Give me his head. There we go. Good fish. Let's go, dude. Come on, Steve. 
Yeah, buddy. Oh my god, that's a really good one, dude. Oh my god, oh. dude. Holy crap. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Do I touch him? Yes, you have I to legitimately touch. can't feel my fingers. That's fine. You gotta touch him. Nice, nice chunky bow. First one for me. Right at the end of the day. Bye, little buddy. Dude. It's like 21 degrees. I think it's probably gonna get, <laughs> just keep dropping as the sun keeps going down. But fish are biting, man. Can't say no to that. Good. All right, guys, we're about to spend our first night in the bus in the winter. Was, was, was it like five, six degrees tonight or something like uh, that? It's supposed to get, well, no, I think it's six degrees now. Yeah, it's six degrees now, so it's, it's I only think, getting colder. I think the, the low was negative eight, was what they said. Yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, as you, you can tell, <laughs> just puffing on a few marbles out of here before we go to... Cold marbles, <laughs> marbles. <laughs> so we're running an extension cord out of Dave's house into the bus, and we have two heaters going. One heater there, one heater here. I'm not feeling right. Steve's got his cave. Steve, what do we what do we got going right here? What's the system? That system that's. <laughs> Steve, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> the system is called. You guys f me on a bunk bed. I don't have enough room to get. Or things you chose that. Oriented. You chose. I'm gonna hear your bitch. Up. I'm a bitch all night. <laughs> 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 so I gotta spend time to do it before I get in bed. We're not gonna be able to sleep because you're all your bitching. Good. You guys. <laughs> I like falling for 40. Tomorrow we're gonna be fishing and in the morning it's supposed to be like six degrees when we start fishing. And Dave wants to get out early. We're gonna hit it hard, try to find some big bows tomorrow on foot. Try not to freeze our asses off. So we'll see in the morning. Yeah, so the uh, inside of the windshield is fogged up. That's how thick the ice is on the inside of the windshield. We're heading out to the river, and it's nice. I was saying to the guys, it's always nice to get a cup of joe and a good hot breakfast. And, you know, we're not really rushing on a day like today. A watch right now says, it said zero degrees. It's, it's jumped up to one degrees. So. Yeah, it's going to be a cold one, folks. So uh, we just got out here and it's, uh, it's like zero degrees right now. And uh, there's no one else fishing, which is not surprising, but it looks like we're not the only ones looking for fish this morning. Depending on where you are in the Snake River, the further you are up, the more you have cold water, you have a little bit less food. Your fish are keyed into eating in the summertime when there's big hatches. Um, down here, these fish are more bait eaters. They eat perch, they eat crayfish, they start to get big quick, so their diet's a little different, as opposed to a headwater stream where a 16-inch fish is 10 years old. These fish are 16 inches year two. In the ski goggles, baby. In the goggles. With it being zero degrees out, 
I really don't want to get my hands wet, and he did us a favor by popping back out. And so we're just going to release him over the net. But good fish. This has been kind of slot ties for today. Gone. This is the coldest you ever fished in. This is definitely the coldest I've ever fished in. <laughs> Got this little bit of breeze right here. I'm trying to like turn so it doesn't hit my face. Well, reel's frozen. The water right now is running about 400 CFS, Dave told us. Whereas it usually runs anywhere between 20 and 30,000. So it's usually way up. He's got a good one. Nice, nice little bow here. It is frigid. I can barely put my hand in the water right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice. Dave out here showing us how it's done. Oh, rods. Rod tip. Rod tip broke. Cookie cutter. That water's cold. Dave, how cold is it right now? This is, you know, it's cold. You gotta get that side. Let the fish be biting, man. That raises the temperature a few degrees. <laughs> Most of the water is over on the other side. But really cool area down here, big boulders and some deep stuff and some big fish, big specimens. So let's go bang them. Magic, magic area where the perfect productivity, perfect amount of nutrients in the river combine with cold water temps to create more than ideal conditions to grow big trout. And that's a hallmark of, of Southeast Idaho. There we go. The, the reel's locked up. <laughs> there we go. Got a little fight in them. Okay, we got one that's all hot and bothered here. Oh, this is a good fish. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is a fat fish. Ho oh, ho. Ho ho. Oh my god. So I was a bit hesitant this morning, uh, you know, being at sub zero temps, but uh, after catching this fish right here, it's all worth it. So glad we made it out. Glad we got in a little adventure in, and uh, definitely the icing on the cake right here. Woo. Woo. There we go. All right, we're wrapping up the day now. Big shout out to Dave, man, for showing us around. Just such a fun nice dude super fishy and uh, just really nice of him to, to take us out here the last two days and show us some of his water and show us some of uh, some of his tricks thank you guys for tuning in following along we had an absolute blast on this trip and uh, we're looking forward to many more this year we've got some really cool things planned so y'all stick around and uh, see y'all in the next one Steve, do you think you could hit that duck from here? Yeah, I could hit that duck from here. With a shotgun? No, with a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> you my deer rifle, I'll hit it. I don't, even, I don't even think you'd hit a deer from there. I hit a deer, I've shot a deer from like 170. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. 170 inches? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay.